And we're live. Hey, everybody. Thank you for your patience. There was some like last minute stuff on my end that <laughs> delayed things for no reason. So thanks for sticking around. Um, we are here today to discuss The Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. Um, second book in the trilogy. Some people's favorite book in the trilogy. Others, it's not their favorite book in the trilogy. So I'm sure the discussion will be uh, <laughs> be heated. Um, so as you know, I'm Chloe Thistle and Verse, and I was wondering if oh, if each of my co-hosts would like to introduce themselves. And I had a quick little like get to know you question that you could answer, which is if you're a godling, what impractical architectural feature would you have in your home? Like how Madding's whole first floor is just like a pool. If you were a godling, what would be in your house? I think I would live like in a tree house and it's just like all open, right? Like not, not really any windows, not really insulation. That would be my impractical house thing. If I was a godling, um, let's start with Emma Ray. I'm just going around on my screen. Okay. Hello. I'm Emma Ray from Emma Ray Empowered. Um, I think my impractical architecture feature would be like all the rooms in my house when you open the door you were in like a different ecosystem so you could like open the door and be in a rainforest or open a door and be on top of a mountain <laughs> so I could at any point experience different parts of the world that I wanted to or have different gardens in different parts of the world I just think that'd be really cool <laughs> that would be cool that's like what the house of many doors by Diana Wynne Jones or like What's that house that Doctor Strange hangs out in? I don't know. He has a house with like dimensions in it. So that sounds like that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hi, everybody. I don't catch it. My channel Shade with the Hobbies. Um, so, impractical thing. I don't think this is impractical. But like all my floors would be heated and I don't feel like that's impractical. Like I don't like the floor like being cold. I don't like having to wear socks. So like the floor is like every room you just walk in and your feet would never be cold. So I don't think it's impractical, but you know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shomla, aka Miss Awesome Saucy. Um I don't know. I like Emma Ray's a lot. I like her. Her. Feature. You can't steal other people's architectural features, Shumla. <laughs> okay, I'll steal a part of it. I'll put like a beach in my house, and I can just go there when I want to go away and relax. Just feel the breeze on my face. <laughs> She's like, that's enough talking. Um, <laughs> my name is Deidre. My channel is. Um, Shay Tree Reads, um, and I think it's sort of similar to everybody's, but what I would like is to be able to, like, dig into the earth in any room, so, and, like, be able to grow stuff anywhere without having to go buy pots and soil and stuff, so, like, you know, I don't know, that seems, I don't even know how to, like, imagine how, what I even want, but, like, I would like to just be able to, like, work the soil in whatever room wherever i imagine that i want a plant i want to be able to do that it'd be like those sandbox amusement parks but like less sand and more more dirt i can see that that would be fun so uh i thought next that we could summarize the book for people who are um who read it a while ago and are still trying to get caught up or jog the memories Oh, Shay, you want to take it away since your summaries were so popular last time? <laughs> Hi. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, boom. Book two. What's book two called? Let me not say it wrong. The Broken Kingdoms, right? Let me get it right. Well, no, because I always thought it was the Hundred Thousands Kingdom, but it's not. It's the Hundred Thousand Kingdom. Like, there's no S on any of it. So, that's like Kroger's or all these. Right. Don't <laughs> laugh at me, y'all. I was like, there's a reason. Okay. So this story, we got a new main character. Her name is Ori. Ori is blind, but Ori is an artist. She creates things with the gift that is her artistry. And she lives in a shadow, which is now this new place that has been created because 10 years ago, 
Yena ascended and became Yena the God, aka the Grey Lady. And there's a tree in the middle of what was it called before Sky? I don't remember. So, like, wherever it is, the tree has erupted, and now the place is shadow, and there's East Shat and West Shat, East Shadow, West Shadow, blah, 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 all these places that you do actually end up hearing a lot through the story, regardless if I say them ever again in this uh, this whole wrap-up. Okay, so Ori is there. She got friends that are there at the row with her, with her, at the row with her, and they sell things. Well, day one... Uh, this lady gets, I feel like she just cheap. I feel like Ori has some stuff to sell and she ain't want to buy none, but she wanted directions and Ori gave her directions because the family was lost and whatnot, but she goes to this alley and in this alley is a dead body. Now, how Ori can tell that there is some sort of dead body, you know? she blind her senses are heightened she smell blood she feel blood there's a lot going on um uh, quickly uh it becomes revealed that the person that is dead is a godling these things that people thought could not be killed right so the godling is dead uh also uh i mean to tell y'all somewhere in this story we find out that a few weeks ago she found a man in a muck bin now i to me, a muck bin sound like garbage. It sound like trash. It sound like mud. Why are you rescuing a human that you found in the mud? I just, I, a dog, sure. A baby duck, yes. Like the Dawn commercials, you get the Dawn, you wash them out. Like it all makes sense. This human being, though, I mean, he belongs in the trash. You know, Shomla ain't wrong. Shomla ain't wrong, is all I'm saying. Uh, so she decides to let this human being she thinks into her home. Then she says, oh, wait, the sun come up and this man is glowing. Why is this man glowing when the sun come up? She don't ask, he don't tell. That's pretty much what happens. It's the uh, body of a killer. Right. Also, uh, he don't have any regard for himself or anybody else. Uh, he just stopped eating. He just be like, I don't want to eat. And then he'll die. But then he come back. You know, it's like a resurrection quite often. Don't know what's going on with that, but we'll follow the story and see what happens. So the next time she goes to work, uh, what happens? I feel like there's this guard from the order of a tempest who just won't stop messing with her. And so she got a little boyfriend that's not her boyfriend. Like she in one of those is we ain't we type of things with a godling named Madden. And so Madden is like, you know, maybe you should just go over to this other little side of the little place and you work over there. Like maybe you just don't, you know, they looking for you and they seem to think you involved. And, you know, I know I can't tell you what to do because you're not my boo, but you still my boo. So like, can you go over here? So she go over there now. Here's where we find out that when she was a little child, um, her daddy used to sing to her. And this man had a voice, a voice that was so amazing that she started to see things because it was magical. And she used to make these drawings and these drawings would be magical. Her daddy would be like, no, baby, don't show, don't show nobody this. Don't show nobody this. To just do this, just do this. And she knew that it was important because, like, her daddy wouldn't sing around her mama. Like, he'd sneak and sing to her. So she knew this was an issue. So uh, she goes to this new little side of shadow to go ahead and sell her stuff. And she's not getting no attention. And, you know, you know, you know, I'm not saying that she was on her uh, Aisha Curry. She wanted a little bit of attention, but she did. So she decided to draw on the child on the sidewalk. And, uh... I don't know what your girl drew, but your girl drew something that drew a crowd. Like, people is like, ooh. Other people are like, ooh, thank you, sis. You getting us some money, too. We people buying my stuff because they seen your stuff. Like, it's all good. Until here come that order of a Tempest dude again. Right? And he like, I, it look a little magical. I don't like that this look magical. Who are you and what are you doing with this magical thing that you doing? And I don't know if he low-key called her the B-word or what happened. But here come 
we gonna call him shiny because that's what she called him. We're gonna call him shiny, the little muck bin man. Here comes shiny, and he come like boo boo bow. Um, here's the thing: order of a tempest is kind of a big deal. It's like low-key socking the police. You can't sock the police as much as we want to, as much as they wrong, we can't do it, right? So it turns into this thing. Um I feel like is this the point where like somebody low key like goes into a hole that she drew and they in a whole different world. Um, so at this point, we all know she magical in some way. We don't know how she magical. She don't know how she magical, but the girl magical. OK, it's important. All right. So then here comes this lovely conversation in which my baby Sia is back in the game. And she is like, you call him shiny. Huh, he don't deserve friends. And you know what? Sia isn't wrong either. He don't deserve friends. Like, I'm sorry, 10 years and you got a friend already? Why? Why? But it's okay. It's okay. The great lady is like, you know what? Um, Sia, I need you to calm down. You know, I know you're mad, baby. It's okay. You know, da, da, da. but the rest of y'all, uh, your other daddy is going to be here in 30 days. So if y'all don't find out what's going on, he going to be over here. And she low key said, you know him better than I do. So like for me, it was kind of like she was like, I'm not saying he low key Vladimir Putin, but like if he say it, he say it and he mean it and it's happening. That's kind of low key how it was, right? So at this point, Ori is like, I don't necessarily know who you are, but I know that you kind of mixed up with all these people over here because everybody acting different now that they see you. And I don't know what that is. So Matt is like, well, you know, come on to my house. Come over here. Come, you know, just come be with me because I got to keep you safe. And she like, well, you can't tell me what to do. We not together. And he like, girl, listen. And she listens. So she show up and she over there. Right. And so um, she kissing him and she like, dang, I feel like somebody judging me. Shiny judging her, judging the mess out of her. Just want you know, he don't like it. He don't like it. He don't like it. So Madden is kind of like. He was just mad that he wasn't getting some. You know. Because quiet as it's kept for a few uh, centuries and whatnot, he kind of ain't been with nobody because, like, uh, you did it to yourself. If you wanted some, you could have got some if you've been nicer. But, you know, <laughs> a Tempest got to learn the hard way is all we are learning from this story. So Madden is like, yeah, I know I can't tell you what to do, but you know I love you, but I want you to really be careful. Like, I know you think he could be your friend, but like, he don't really got friends, but like, I love him because he my daddy. But also, my daddy ain't nothing, and I need my daddy to be more than nothing. Like, you know, Madden has some daddy issues. It's understandable when your daddy kill your mama. It's understandable, but you know, it's, it's what happened. So they're at the house and Madden is like, hey, I need to take care of some business because uh, Madden got a little uh, a, a little side hustle. For the record, I want y'all to know Madden be selling some things. He be slanging, you know, and uh, he be slanging godling blood. Now, here's the thing. Does this make Madden a suspect in the killing of his sister? Quite possibly it does, right? But, you know, here's the thing. If there's anybody that got a good heart in this story, I feel like it's Madden. I feel like I know Madden had a good heart from day one. I never had no icky feelings about him. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Okay, so as we continue through the story, right, uh, Madden go handle his business, and she on the roof, and Naha, not Naha, E Tempest is like, oh, dang, that's my tea. Give me a second, y'all. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> I was boiling over. I was like, wait a minute, let me stop. Okay, so she on the roof, and Tempest is like, you like my son? And she's like, yeah, I love your son. He's like, oh, you love him? Well, come here, little girl. And he said, come here, little girl. And he kiss her, and she kiss him back. And then he'd be like, you don't love him enough. And then she get mad. Well, if you think that little kiss did anything, here's the thing. She know that kiss did something. I mean, Madden's a god. Ling, Tempest is a god. The truth of the matter is it did something, whether she want to admit it or not. But she low-key felt a little bad that his daddy was like, poof, I told you you didn't love him. And looky, 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 there you go. Um. She don't get enough time to get to wallow in like trying to prove him that he wrong. Cause then this assassin show up and he killed her everybody. 
it's a black hole here. Somebody getting sucked in here. Madden is gone. They end up in this place that is nothing but darkness and it's craziness. And she hates it, even though she blind, because it's like she can't feel anything. It's not just black. It's like there's nothing. And it's a lot, right? It's a lot for her senses. They pull her out of this thing. Turn out. These mugs then kidnapped her. They then took her to this occult house called the House of the Risen Sun, right? And so she like, okay, what's going on? Girl, when I tell you an era, Mary is a part of it. Now, if y'all was here for last book, y'all know these mugs is like cut and throat. Like they don't get no nothing by no nobody, right? And so this uh uh this air mary is like you know yeah we brought you here because uh we're here to take over because i see that you see that we got other stuff going on that ain't been around for a long time right uh and i noticed you worship a tempest because you worship the bright and here's the thing i don't know why anybody think anybody will willingly worship the bright when y'all know it was forced upon people like it was forced on everybody so like why would you think that anybody you i just think you should just assume that everybody was forced from jump and then work from there but that's not what they was doing okay that's not how they was coming into this they was like we want to tip us back as god we don't like these other people so we're gonna do some assassination and she like i mean i don't know how y'all gonna kill a god and they like well let me tell you what we gonna do we gonna start draining your blood and we gonna use you to kill him and she like my blood why and they're like well you know like because you're a demon and she like nah <laughs> nah like y'all they had to tell this girl she was a demon like 17 different times and she still was like, nah, nah, nah. Okay, here's here's where Ori, the second time Ori and I just was like, girl, we need to talk. Okay, because Ori is sitting there and she like, man, I really, 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 really want to get out of here, right? So the first time she tried to get out the room, like she used the candle wax and she used her food and she make a whole nother world and she tries to get away, right? So then when they put her in this place and they telling you, ooh, we trying to get all the God and she like, I'm gonna get my boo Maddie. Here's the thing. I understand calling your boo when you in trouble. You know, when you in trouble, your man's supposed to be like right there. I get it. Here's the thing. If I knew that I could kill my man unintentionally, like if they was like, oh, I got a spear and it got your blood dipped in it and this is what we're going to kill him with, I personally wouldn't have been like, hey, boo, show up right now. Unfortunately for me, that's what Ori did. She was like, oh, I'm going to make this place. Madding, come on, Madden, come on. And he come and they kill him. Now, is it her fault? Yes, yes. Plain and simple. That's just the answer to the question. It's her fault. He's dead. Uh, and so she like, you know, I'm going to get revenge because, you know, you know, your girl loves a good revenge story. So she like, hey, Tempest, I know I messed up. I know you want to kill me. I know you just had your hand over my mouth and I couldn't breathe. But like, let me get my man's killer back and then you can kill me and we good. So they come up with this plan to jump out this window. Y'all, they jump out this window. Both of them, the broke limbs, he pretty much dead. She decides to call on Lil. Now, I forgot to tell y'all about Lil, but let me tell y'all about Lil. Lil, Lil is one of the godlings that is like me or her. Like, I might be scared as F of her, but I mess with Lil. Like, I understand Lil and her nature and where she coming from. So Lil was like, oh, I ain't been praised in a while. This kind of feel good. What you want, little girl? What can I do for you? And she like, you know, there's somebody here and I just need you to go get him because he's uh, he he's the one's killing your siblings. She like, I mean, I don't really care. Like, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Da -da -da -da. You know, that, 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 that's their business. I let them do what they do. And then, then something happened to where they let it slip that this man who been killing the demons been eating them. And Lil was like, wait, see, this is why I'll mess with you because y'all be leaving out important pieces of information. You should have led with the eat. You should have led that immortal is trying to eat an immortal. That's where you should have started. And she like, okay, if I help you, what you gonna do for me? And she like, you know, I don't know what you want. She like, well, it look like your arm broken. Let me, let me have it because eat, Lil eats dead things but they have to be willingly given to her and she like oh yeah you can have my arm and tempest wake up that boy was sleep y'all he ain't said nothing his whole time the boy didn't say nothing he wake up and he like oh so you gonna kill another one of my kids let me tell you the fact that he tempest didn't kill this girl is 
you know, it Tempest is growing is what I'm saying is that we got to admit that he Tempest has an arc in this story, whether I like the mug or not. He didn't change a little bit because he let you get to point two where you didn't already been like, yeah, Lil, come on, girl, eat my arm. So luckily, Lil is like, now nah, I'm going to take care of this demon. And she like, y'all go get away. And she tell him, little boy, who you think you coming at? Who you, you, you thought you was doing something? You think this darkness do anything? Because quiet as it's kept, Lil is not how those daughter. <laughs> we are, you know how we feel about not how those. We know, you know. And you know how those children, we just, it's something about them. It's something about them, right? So they escape. And then what happened? Let me think about it. They escape and where did they go now? Oh, Lord Dump, Lord Dump and Shoe Stocks. Yeah, Lord Dump, right. They go and they're in the they're in the thing. But yeah, that's where Lil eats or tries to go, goes against, what's his name? Date? Date, yeah, Date, that's his name. But then when they leave, where do they go after they leave? Now I gotta remember. Oh, sorry. The beggar, like that shanty town where a tempest had been hiding out before oh, yeah. he went to yeah. he finds out when he first got out of, you know, he got kicked out of heaven, Loki, uh, and got put on the earth. He down here with the beggars. Now, here's the thing. Everything about the bright me tempest is light and holy and clean. So this is like a direct contradiction to what this man is supposed to be. Right. And so you realize that, you know, this man who ain't supposed to change and low key didn't change in less than 10 years. I'm not saying you was lying to your selfie, Tempest, and you could have fixed this over a century ago. But I'm saying you was lying to yourself. And you could have fixed this over a century ago. And I don't even understand why you didn't. But that's OK. That's OK. So uh, I feel like where the at this point, don't they take her to Scott? And she meets her real. We get yeah. to see her real because her real is still head of the air Mary. And you find out that the reason the other air Mary is doing what she's doing is because she was like, hey, you ain't even supposed to be here. You got this power illegitimately and I'm going to legitimately get it back. She thought. Uh, so he's like, you know, um, I appreciate you letting us know. And uh, that dude that you thought was like treating you bad was really a spy. You know, he trying to earn his way up into being a full blood. Low key, he ends up being Nahado's physical self from when he was captured. Because, you know, yeah, and he, she was like, no, nah, let him have a life. He need to deserve some freedom too. So he like, you know, I'm trying to get in where I fit in. Let me do this work for Tariq. I'm going to do this thing. And Tariq for like... You know, hey, Ori, it's nice to meet you, fam. Um, Here's the thing. uh, I need your blood, too. Because, like, you're not supposed to exist, but you do exist. And, you know, I wouldn't be Aaron Mary if I just wasn't prepared for any and everything. Uh, And she's kind of like, you know, well, I kind of don't got no choice. Because it's like, y'all either going to kill me or I'm going to agree to this. And he tippets is like, but what about the blood y'all already got? And to real like, oh. Okay, um, so you knew about that? Okay, so I might have to rethink this. Yeah, you gonna rethink it. You gonna let her go, you know, and we not gonna deal with this. And I'm not gonna tell Nahado Tenyana that you got what you got. And so, you know, a year later, she gets to go live in this house and whatnot. And so, like, it's at this point that, like, it Tempest is like, I mean, I've been ready for 10 years. I'm trying to see what you're trying to make happen because, you know, I ain't really had none. And they do it, and it's okay because she still miss Madden. And, like, now nah, I don't like, all right, you know what? That ain't my truth for him. Let me show you. Let me show you what I got. And... You know, that happens, and then Yana is like, not, not, not. <laughs> I'm here to, you know, make you disappear. She's like, wait a minute, what? You, I just, I, just, I thought you thought, did it? Um, it's really not no question. My boot thing needs, he needs this. And I just can't, I, you know, I wish he would have found you 500 years from now. That maybe I could have convinced him to be like, you know, let her alone. Leave her alone. But he, it's 10 years. That 10 years compared to like centuries, boo, like I really can't do nothing about that. Um, and she like, but wait a minute. What if you just leave him? What What if you just be like, ah, I can't do this. You just be like, deuces. You know, you do that. 
could you do that for me? Maybe, you know, that'll hurt him enough that, you know, maybe not have to be okay with that. And here's the thing. Ori, you done known this man for like, well, I guess at this point, it's like a year and some months. So, you know, we'll give you like two years at this point. Um, your two years don't trump the lifetime of stuff this man done done. Why you in here arguing with two gods about this man? You brave. I thought Yana was brave for sleeping with not. No, you brave for arguing with two gods, girl. I just, I could never. I'd be like, so you said I could live? That's that's the last thing I heard was that I could, I could live. I, I just got to go. I'm going to go. And then you get to the part where you find wow. out she been talking to the little baby in her belly. Uh, does that mean that not uh, that Etipus knocked her up? Yes. Does that mean that they done low-key made him a deadbeat daddy? Yes. Does that mean that there are more demons in this story? Yes. And that's the end. Thank you for the summary, Shay. <laughs> I don't have a thing to add. Um... Yeah, is anyone, yeah, I don't think there's really anything to add to that. Um, so we switched protagonists this book. We went from Yena to Ori. And I was wondering, what did you think of Yori, sorry, Yori, Yaina as a godling? Um, were you excited to see we got Sia back, we got Tavril back, we got Hado back? Um, or were there other people that you wanted to be back this book that weren't? I was excited to see everyone again it was cool seeing Yaini as a god it was cool seeing other characters talking about her you know like the parts where they'd be like oh yeah some like mortal chick did some weird stuff and now she's a god like it was really cool seeing what all of that would seem from the outside looking in that was really cool um it was cool seeing another character get used to seeing Sia and understanding his nature and everything. Like, Ori kind of went through similar things of Yaini. And I think even Madding told her something similar that someone else had told Yaini of like the, can you imagine the strength he has to stay as a child for all of these years? It was so interesting seeing that kind of scene mirrored. Um, I don't think there were any other characters I wanted to follow up with. I liked seeing the ones that we saw again. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I, I personally was hoping for a Samina update. I just was wanting to know how her punishment was going. I just felt like we just needed a little update on that. Um, I loved the Madding talking about Sia uh, because like, like about like, no, he's bigger than like, he's stronger than me. Like, no, like there is a level of like fear and reverence there. Um, and I love it because like, we kind of talked about it in the first one, like the nature of gods, but it became like a very big striking point with this story, like their natures. Uh, and so I li like uh, Emma Ray, I loved getting to see see it through someone else's eyes. Like Yena had an immediate motherly reaction and that wasn't the reaction that's that or rehab to see it and it's so it's interesting it's like do you, did you like kids or like is it like you just you was like this is the mean kid like there were just so many different things that i thought was interesting getting to see that um i also think it's interesting uh the the dynamics of the story for e tempest and just knowing that like people come into people's lives at different points. So you don't ever know what happened before you got there. So all you know is that person. So like, yeah, that version of the person that you know is like this weak mortal person, but like, that's not that. So I think that part of the story and getting to see how like, you have to interpret hearing all these negative things about this person that you technically don't even think positively about. You just don't think as bad as they think. So I thought like that part of getting to see E. Tempest because we literally get like a flash of him at the very end and he's like very proud and like getting to see that pride break, I thought was super dope. Yeah, you make a good point, Shay, because that was also a theme in um, the first book with Yaini and her mother. She only knew her as her mother, but before, and people talking about her had that she was this ruthful, ruthless Aaron Mary. She was the Aaron Marys of Aaron Mary. So that's that's a good point. Um, for me, obviously, there could have been more Nahados, but it is what it is. This is a Tempest story. I don't want to, you know, but um, 
yeah, it was nice to see Yaini come into her her god uh, her goddess thing. And it doesn't it seems like she's a lot more I guess a lot she's like the same but to like ascended. Like she doesn't let a lot of things bother her anymore as um as much as we saw her in the book. So that was interesting. Um yeah, seeing Sia again, I was happy about that. Um, yeah, and seeing all the different godlings was cool. Yeah, it seems like Yena's taken on a lot more of like a mediator role in this yeah. book. Like, I don't know if we talk a lot about what like Yena wants or what Yena's doing. She's a lot of like, okay, this is what Nahadoth wants. This is what a Tempest wants. This is good for mm -hmm. the humans. And we see a lot of her serving as like a go-between for all these different interests in the book. Right, yeah. Um, for me, you know, along with Skamina update, I want to know how Descartes is doing. Is he dead? Like, is he suffering in his afterlife? I would like to know these things. Um, and then as far as Yana and her God, this hood, um, I personally, I'm not sure that I can make a judgment call on how I feel she's handling it because this was her punishment for Etempus, right? So she's just kind of having to see it through and it hasn't been seen through yet. Um, I guess she, you know, I guess she's demonstrating her power a bit by being able to hold um, Nahado back for 30 days or however long it was end up being in total. But like, yeah, I can't, I don't know that I can really, I, not me personally yet. It took me so long and I don't know why this is. I don't know if it was some kind of disconnect between switching back and forth between the audiobook and the um, ebook. But it took me a long time to put together that Yana and the Great Lady were the same person. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm so sorry. But it took me a long time to put that together. Um, and then as far as seeing Sia again, I love Sia. That's I like his, I just like his nature. But I think that he just automatically had a distaste for Ori because of his, her association with E Tempest and maybe didn't necessarily give her a fair shake. Um, I mean, I don't think he really had any decisions or any act, interactions that led to anything bad happening to Ori, but he just kind of like, discounted her because she had some kind of compassion for you for this and for shining um, you know but i enjoyed seeing him again i remember when i first read it i wanted more of yena um just because we had like followed her through the first book and had grown so attached to her and now i don't know if i would have wanted more of her um now I'm just like, where's, Lil, where's Lil's novella? Um, even though she wasn't in the first book, I'm very curious about Lil. Um, it was interesting to see what uh, Hado is up to. Because I don't know if I would have guessed that like he would stay pretty much in the place that he'd been tormented and be like, I just want to like ascend the ranks of these people who had kind of been tormenting me. Um, like I don't think I would have guessed that at all. So that was interesting to see. Um, yeah, that was super surprising. I feel like me and Shay might have had a conversation about it when I got to that part because I was like, oh, I don't know why I didn't expect that from Jimison, but like, duh, right? <laughs> like, I should have sort of expected to hear something about him because he was sort of, I mean, he was in a very big role in the first book, but he was, she made it a point to bring him up and, and let us understand the differences between you know, his night form and his human form. So it's kind of like, oh, it's nice to, I thought that was cool how she tied that in, so. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what people thought of Ori and her magic. Um, we've talked about it a little bit, but Ori can see magic and also she can, with her art, open up portals to different places. I was wondering what people thought of her abilities. I don't know, I thought that was super cool. The idea of, um, cause like, in, I don't know how, um, how this really is in reality with blind people, but the idea of being able to see in a way, 
um, and have your other senses sort of enhance that a bit. I don't know because because you you know that you're walking over stone, and then for for Ori to be able in certain parts where the light would get through, she'd be able to see the shape of the stone, or like when she was painting stuff, you know, whatever her mind's eye would you know, it would just come to life. And I think about kind of relating that to how stories come to writers. I would imagine like this big bunch of words that are just kind of like jumbling, you know, in there and then you put it together and it's kind of magical in that same way. Um, or ideas or like whole stories or whatever it is. So I thought that was really cool to how she saw that. And the, I, I know they described the way her eyes like physically looked at some point. Um, but I could never really visualize it. Um, Did you watch I know it had, like ever? No, and the people who okay, never mind. Have a I was going to say, I just should. wonder if Ori Hugo in my head this whole time because the Hugos had the eyes kind of similar to hers. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up so I can get like a visual. I, was, I kept trying to like visualize what I thought her eyes looked like to other people. But I couldn't quite like confirm it in my head, but. I just thought that her magic was cool, and I was sad when she didn't have it anymore after that final battle. I thought that was, I thought, I felt like that was kind of like, oh, she kind of got punished too, <laughs> in a sense of the sense of the matter. I liked her. I thought her ability was cool because I guess the portal thing. She never really, like, I guess it's always it's kind of limited because like I don't think she can ever actually like send people to like the other places that she sees for the most part like I thought she'd open that portal to that whole other world with the the order and then they were like it's too much magic if you actually like send someone through so that's why she like accidentally closed the portal on the guy and like sliced him in half um but like it seems like the holes is like her favorite like assassination technique. Like I feel she used that on Shiny like all the time. It was like he'd be annoying and she'd be like, I'm gonna open a hole in your chest, like boom. <laughs> yeah, I like how she used the holes to kill him. <laughs> that was really, really funny. But I did like that it had to do with like painting and that her dad's form of magic was completely different and it was singing um I think I put it in the discord that when her dad was singing and she said I think she said like daddy I can see the colors or something like that that instantly made me think of synesthesia because that's a real form of it you hear music and you start seeing colors um and obviously her situation is very very different but I just thought I thought it was a very unique way to start telling this story that has to do with gods and godlings through the perspective of someone who is blind and can see remnants of their magic. Um, it was cool trying to visualize what that must look like, you know? But yeah, I wonder if that's why her mom got, or was it her dad? Her mom or her dad got so scared when she was painting, like was unknowingly was like a giant hole of some other world just above her as she's just like, painting on a canvas and that's why the family was like oh no one can see this because there's just a bunch of parallel worlds all over terrifying <laughs> um so for me there were two things that <clears throat> about our magic that like i like that stuck out to me and it was one when e tempest was talking about um how she was a child of Inifa, uh because she could create um, and I always think that that's so interesting because like I there's this uh, there's this video uh, or this interview that uh, Kurt Franklin did on The Breakfast Club. And he was talking about uh, being like being a creative person and like or well, like how uh, creative people um, can sometimes like deal with more depression or more things like that, like empathetic. And he was talking about like he felt like creatives are the closest thing to God on earth as you can get because you're literally a creator. And so in that, it requires a lot more out of you emotionally. Uh, and I thought like when I was uh, reading that about that I was thinking about that with Ori like you have literally been creating and creating your whole life and that's what your thing is and so to think about like children of NFL all have that sort of gift in some way was like a dope thing to think about and then the other part that I liked is that um there 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 are stories that I'm working on on 
a character that is blind and a character that is deaf. And so I have interviewed uh, deaf and blind people. And so blindness is a spectrum. Like there are people who are part of the blind community that can see shades and shadows or can see limitedly. And so I thought it was interesting because a lot of times some of the criticisms we hear about uh, writing disabled curatures in fantastical worlds is using magic to get rid of the disability. And I like that like, uh, and I know that, there, that we're going to talk about this in a different question a little bit more in depth, but I like that it wasn't completely getting rid of her blindness, that it was like, you can see something, but what you can see doesn't necessarily, like, it can help you, but it doesn't necessarily, it's not guaranteed to help you, like, type of deal. It's not guaranteed to change. And it wasn't necessarily, like, something that was changed because of magic it was something that was always her like she's always been able to see other magic because she's always been magical she just didn't understand how she was so i liked that concept of it when i was reading it um compared to like the criticism i heard of things like of other stories so. uh for me what well, everyone else said is basically what i think um it was interesting that um, N.K. Jemison chose to tell the story through a blind person's perspective. Um, and yeah, it was interesting to see how she described how she saw the world, how she saw the magic, and uh, what her individual magic could do. I think uh, Jemison had written a blog post that I had linked in the Discord, and I'll let's see if I can put it in the comments today. My stream is being a little finicky, but she'd written sort of about like what it was like interviewing people, like very briefly talked about it for writing these descriptions and stuff. And I think for her, she had said that she in the end she kind of regretted how she had like associated the blindness with the magic as if it were like an abnormality as opposed to just being like a part of her identity. Um, but it was like interesting to hear her talk about like the things that she learned and how she thought about it as she was approaching the character. Um, so like a quick plug for Body Minds Reimagined by Dr. Sammy Schalk. It's like literary criticism and I really, really enjoyed it. It's very quick and accessible to read, but um, there's a chapter in here where Schalk kind of talks about Ori a little bit and like basically how, um, sci-fi and fantasy can be used to like make things that feel like familiar and have like a lot of like preconceptions about like different and kind of make you like like think and like kind of like take some distance and come at it in a new perspective and she talked um shock talked a bit about how jemison kind of does that with ori's character um let me pull up my notes really quick so i wanted to share some of it um so namely, um, looking at seeing like disabilities as like not like a static thing, but like something that changes like place to place. So for example, like Ori can go pretty much anywhere in sky without assist or shadow without assistance because magic is everywhere. But if she were to stay in Nimro, she needs a lot more help because there isn't really any magic around. And um, the author also talks a little bit about um, Ori's relationship to like eyesight, like when she gets into I guess it's still called Sky, the Aramari stronghold. And like, she can see like everything. How it's like, not like a necessarily like a great thing for her. Like it's still like, she has to adjust to, like depth perception and like this new sense. And it's like, not like a, like a quick fix necessarily something that she's like chasing. It just kind of, it's a different thing for her, I guess. So I just wanted to share that because it's not something I'm super knowledgeable about, but I thought it was interesting and I thought it was pretty cool. Everyone's different perspective on it. Um, they want to have any reflections or reactions or more things they want to I did about. love how often it was made sure that she understood that it was painful for her to see. Like she would talk about her eyes hurting or her eyes being tired because of seeing the magic. So it wasn't like you're saying, like it wasn't just this positive thing and it made everything all better. Like it did have its negative effects on her. And so that was another thing that I liked about it. Any other comments before we move on to the next question? No. Okay. What do people think of the villains in this story? 
Um, this time around, we had who is it? Sermin and Date. Sermin's like the Armari lady who didn't like Tibral. And then there was Date, who was like, I forget what his deal was, but he was just like, I like to eat hearts because I want to be strong. <laughs> so that was him. Um, like, what did you what did you think of them as villains, especially compared to like the Armari from the previous book? They were so annoying. Just right. like so, so annoying. annoying. <sighs> and I was literally like, Dante, you really just don't know what it means to be a guy because you would not be trying to sign up for this. Like, mm -hmm. bro, you are trying to be like, like literally, that's what I was getting. Like, you want to be a guy. That's why you're trying to eat all these immortal beings and hope that it gives you, like, you can do what Yanny did. Like, you're hoping that it changes the scales. And I was like, bro, like, you really don't want this job. You know, it's like that little that little video of the person who sees somebody coming in for the interview and they like, don't, don't come for this job, like run, don't, like literally like, bro, this is not what you want. And I mean, he saw it, it really ain't what you want. I didn't ever understand his motivations, I don't think. Like he was just power hungry. Is that, was I that the- I think that was kind of it, like, yeah. I didn't think anything past that, I guess so. You know, I was just like, okay, who's going to be the one to kill him? Because I think he was power hungry and he was mad about the gods killing all the demons. That's oh, that I, makes sense. I can understand that. It was so like, like a revenge. Yeah, yeah, I got the revenge and power thing about it. And I was like, but like, but but is this the way? Too. Because like, here's the thing is that gods haven't been having sex with y'all for y'all to be born. So y'all come from like a line of them. So they really ain't get all y'all. So like, shut up, like low key, like legitimately keep living your life. And you like, now they know you exist. Now they looking for y'all. Like they thought y'all were, I don't know. It just bought like, bro, you put more attention on y'all than y'all had. Also, how are you eating all these goblins and you still haven't figured out who Shiny is? Like, if you're getting their powers, aren't you getting their memories? How do you not know? Uh, the way they me. didn't think that him die literally dying and coming back to life wasn't more of a, right. like, a whole right. God thing. I didn't understand why they didn't eat him. Like, make it make sense. It did not make sense why they it were like, oh, you're nothing. He's just trash. Mm -hmm. I he killed like, him, he keeps coming back. You think there's something special? I don't or... think the only reason this even low-key works is because y'all have made the Air Mary super prideful. Because, like, any other time, this makes no sense. Like, outside of y'all, uh, and, like, outside of Air Mary being like, well, it just couldn't be him. Like, I was like, bruh, like, why did he live this long? They're and like, so it's I, just a magical anomaly. They happen every once in a while. Right, or, or my thought is, did they kill him, but they couldn't kill him? And it's, right? They didn't, kept killing him. They kept they killing did. him. He came back to life. Like and, like, and didn't Tavril say that Saranim knew what actually happened when Yaini was, like, turned into the guy? So what? what? I, don't I thought understand. she was thrown because he was Marine. She had seen, like, all the white Jesus statues around her place. And was like, oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't he too I, dark or something? Nah, he's too dark to be my guy. Yeah, okay, he bro. was too dark. Like, all I thought about was like, bro, I swear if Jesus comes back and just go knocking on these white evangelical doors, like I just <laughs> like I hope he like ah, ha, 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 cause that's what I felt. Like that's legitimately what I felt it was the whole time. I was like, like he's telling you like this is somebody important and like even as they're telling you you're important like you're scoffing like in this moment i just was like you gotta be Aaron mary like that's the only way this makes sense because bruh were y'all satisfied with i forget the the one order keeper's name that kept like messing with um it starts with an art yeah were y'all satisfied with his ending what happened to him I thought That's where I'm going Warrior. with this question. Oh. <laughs> I, think that's where I, was going. I don't remember what happens to him. Yeah, I think so he's fine. Say I again. remember somebody else went through the hole, and I remember like the conversation was like, "You were still gonna have to worry about him later on," but I don't remember worrying about him later on. 
Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe he's still around. I thought that he had been. I thought that she, when she was trying to report the house of the risen sun, she went to him. Or he was yeah. called in at some point, and then he turned her over to Hado. Yeah, that's right. So oh, he's just you're, chilling. You're right. I thought he's just chilling. Yeah, you're right. I wow. thought I don't remember. I didn't remember. I forgot that he was the one that answered the door when um she went to the it was the White Hall. I think yeah, it was the White Hall. Yeah. Oh, okay. So never mind. <laughs> Like, I thought Date was, like, a fun villain and that, like, the descriptions about, like, what he looks like after he's eaten all the hearts and stuff like that. And, like, he has, like, this one face and the other face, like, but you could still, like, feel all the presence and stuff and, all like, all the chaos. But, like, I think in terms of, like, villains that were, like, satisfying, I felt like the Aramari in the first book were more satisfying for me. Also, I just kind of realized that, like, Ori didn't really, like, do anything to bring the villain. Uh, I guess she... She didn't really do anything to bring the villains down. Like, Tivril kind of handled most of it. And then she, like, used her magic to give Shiny back his abilities for a little bit. And then he kind of did the rest. And I was like, dang. I mean, I guess it was, like, a good assist, but still. <laughs> but I like no, the you're right. Died. You like the way that Dante died? Yeah, he died by the god he was so revering of, so... Is that right. Mm-hmm. That made me flash back to what is it, Yena killing Kuru? Because I felt like the script was very similar. It's like he's like smiling and he's like gentle, but it's like you know nothing good is gonna happen next. Kuru was like the second thought to Yena. She just cracked her neck and yeah. Was yeah, because he was like again. This is that kind of goes back to what I said a minute ago. He's still not into the moment of his death that he realized who he was dealing with. And he had literally tried to kill this dude, I guess, through regular means a few times. And he was just like, ah, he can be with the girl or whatever. It's like, mm, right. Yeah. Like, you're like, well, his blood is like, he's not a godling, but he's not, or his blood is like, he's not a demon. But you see yeah. that he's magical. So like, what else yeah. can he do? There's only three types like, of people that got magic. God, And God. you know it's not... Didn't make sense. And they know that's where I was questioning. I don't know if I said this in the Discord or um, just in my head or whatever. That's why I was like, do the people know that you know E Tempest has fallen and he's walking the earth? Like, do they know exactly what has happened? Because it doesn't make sense again that Date and um my other girl, um, I forgot her name anymore, <laughs> I can't pronounce it, but uh, it didn't make sense that they couldn't figure out that this. So I was like, everybody hmm. doesn't know, but they knew. That's why they I, were that's what I'm like. It, it just didn't make, make sense. sense. They could like, account for two like, of the three. Like, yeah, that part didn't make y'all sense. Probably just y'all, were telling her. y'all were telling her the story. So, like, that's where it didn't make sense to me. Other than Aaron Mary. Like, that's it. Because other than that, it don't make no sense. Like she said, she couldn't believe that he was Tempest because he's marinating. He's like, what? So it didn't even go to their minds that it could be him. What did you think of the House of the Risen Sun as like this little like cult background thing and also like the discussions with Ori about religion? Because like I thought Ori had been practicing at one, not really ever practicing, practicing, but like she went to school and was like kind of part of her culture's background to like worship the tempest even though they did it differently but she's kind of like been disillusioned after her father's death um what do you think of like that conversation between her and i was it Sir, sermon was talking sermon, to her yeah. sermon? okay um i thought uh i thought it was really good because it like to me it parallels like my conversations with people about why i don't call myself a christian because like I liked how she was like, gods didn't do that to my dad. Humans did that. Like people did that. Because like for a lot of people that do get like disillusioned with religion, a lot of times it's like the religion, but it's really the people and how they act out whatever they believe their faith to be. So I love that that was there. And I feel like like it was there purposely for that reason. Like religion can have its bad points because of humans 
and how they choose to act out and exhibit what it is. And so I thought that was a great conversation. And then I also liked that um, uh, Saruman, like, kept feeling like she was like, I'm going to tell you what you're feeling. I'm going to tell you, like, what you're doing. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. And I liked it because it was like, it's part of, I feel like, conversations that, like, older people have with younger people. Like, I know because I've been there. I know because I can tell in the way you're responding and the way that you're reacting. Like, I felt like it was interesting for uh, Ori because Ori was like, I'm mad. Like, stop. Stop telling me how I'm thinking. Stop being in my head. Like, stop. I'm mad that she's right. So I just love that whole dynamic and getting to see it from Ori's point of view. It's also interesting because Saranen also had like a hope that um, Ori would come on their side, be part of their side. So it kind of feels like, like you know how people say they want to save someone. Uh, they keep preaching about, you know, religion or whatever, and they want to save someone. It kind of felt like that. And, yeah, it was interesting. I think it was a good conversation because it's real. Like, when she said, like Shay said, the people killed my father not the gods so yeah it's a question to think about like is it really god who's doing this or is it like people in them in themselves it was interesting okay. actually oh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off oh, go ahead go ahead no it's interesting because she brought up that like the mob had started right after nahadoth was freed and like being like oh like maybe it's somehow connected to him like the god of chaos being freed um that this big chaotic event happened right afterwards um so i didn't really know what i thought ori's reaction was gonna be because she didn't really have an allegiance to nahado before and, like she didn't really know the whole story of what happened because she only saw the aftermath right and she was taught to like be afraid of nahado because of what he did to the continent and stuff that they lived in so that's that's an interesting point so sort of not really piggyback, but I also noticed some parallels with Christianity with the different cults and the different ways that people choose to worship Friday Tempest. Um, and I thought it was interesting um, because, like, people really do just decide to they form whole denominations off of what they feel comfortable or what they decide is the most important thing to highlight um, in the book that we're all supposed to be reading. So, you know, it's kind of like, and also the human factor of it all, like you can read the same sentence and 10 people will get different meanings out of that. So, you know, I thought it was appropriate, I guess, uh, that it was a cult that was sort of the driving villainous force here. I really just agree with what everyone said. <laughs> so I won't regurgitate. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so in the previous book, for me, I thought there was like a lot of like overarching commentaries on like plantations and slavery and stuff. And when I was reading this book, I didn't feel myself thinking as much about like, oh, like what's the hidden meaning of this conversation? Like I felt like I was more just like there for the action and like the, the characters and stuff. And I was wondering how you were feeling as you were reading the book. Did you feel like there's like an overarching like message or like parallels or something in the story? Wait, will you say the question again? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that like the last one, it felt like there's a lot of like, parallels to like slavery in the US in terms of how the Aramari like structure their house and their family and like how they run things. And I felt myself like the first, when I read the first book, like thinking through that a lot and like wondering like, okay, so this person did this, like, is that like a, a parallels or like a lesson here or something? And this book, I found myself focusing more on like the action and the characters. And I was wondering if people's reading experiences for each of these books were different um, in terms of, like what you were focusing on, or if you thought there was like some sort of overarching like message or issue being explored in this book as well. So for me, I thought that <clears throat> uh, so this is my second time reading them. So when I read the first, uh, when I read them both the first time, 
uh, I definitely saw like slavery, plantation, white, black America in book one. In book two, I thought the conversation um, was more uh, was more so about like forgiveness and atonement. Um, now reading it the second time, I see the story about um, forgiveness and motherhood a lot stronger the first book than I ever saw it the first time. And this time I see the like, the commentary on religion throughout the entire story that I never saw in this nature the first time. Like I saw it in that one conversation, but now in rereading it the second time, I see how like from the beginning, there were like conversations about religion and beliefs from like the start of the book that I didn't see the first time, so. Sorry, sorry, you can go. Okay, I saw a uh, parallel to the police when it came to the order keepers. And on page 481, I highlighted, I think this is right after she was doing that chalk drawing, um, where it's, it said, they had loved me a moment before. Now they were going to just stand there useless while the keepers took their revenge. I was like, ah! Oh! <laughs> I yelled. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I might have talked about oh, it. Oh, I read them in Hey Now Blues. When I read that, that was what I heard. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah. So that one uh, really struck me because everyone was. Everyone was loving her art. And then the police came around. And they were all like, oh, wow. It's a beautiful day. Like, just <laughs> not even paying attention anymore. And then when she um, then ran to home dude who we just realized has just been chilling how unconcerned he seemed when she was like there's danger and he was like wow weird and then eventually handed her off and like the story progressed but that also then made me think of how like religion and the police can be so exceptionally entangled at least where I live a lot of them um and how like I don't know the entanglement of like cults of religion, how it's like, you know, you can find politicians that are a part of this group and, and such and such. I don't know. I think they're, I think I was focusing more on that than on the parallels to slavery in the first book, but I definitely did find myself not noticing those patterns from the first book. And for a moment I was like, am I dumb? <laughs> am I going to get on this live? And everyone's going to be like, wow. So this glaringly obvious symbolism. And I'm going to be like, yikes, I didn't see it. <laughs> I was just going to say that I was less compelled to tab and make a bunch of notes in this one. Um, and yes, I was more along for the ride of the action. And I felt like, this is my first time reading just um but um i felt like it was more about uh, forgiveness and <clears throat> or like like she said atonement more so than forgiveness because i don't think they care that much about forgiving it took just so much as they want him to have learned a lesson and um you know and punishing him. I think they want to make him hurt, too. So, I was going to say, um, didn't he learn his lesson? They're like, ah, oh, you did it. You're too good. <laughs> you were too fast. You were too fast. So they want to hurt. They want to hurt him. And I don't think he doesn't deserve it. So there's that. And I think there's um, less racism because the uh, Aramary aren't necessarily. They're the villains, but they're not the big drive. They're not the big focus here. So it's more colorism and classism. I think that is because, you know, you got Madding selling the god the godling blood, and you got you got Ori associating with godlings and associating with well, not associating with, but being poor and having to to sort of you know make ends meet, however, kind of hustle in that way. And you got the order keepers, and you got all these gods now just lose. So it's a lot of you know, trying to find your clique and find your, your people and kind of navigating all of that and still trying to be a part of daily hustle and bustle. As less as it was in the first book because Yana was just, she was summoned there. There was not like she had a choice, like she had to come there in the first book. So. 
Yeah, for me, like uh, everyone else said, the second book wasn't really heavy on the, you know, the connections to slavery or racism, but there were moments where it did show through, like when Ori was taken to the House of Risen Sun and she was talking to John and John was like, oh, I'm sorry this happened to you. And like when she was talking about her, her people's history and how all that stuff went down she she was telling her a whitewashed uh history like the air mary has whitewashed their history and yeah that stood out to me i was like oh this, this is white supremacy at work you know how they don't want to tell us the real history they want to tell us what they want us to know so that um i saw that but like yeah everyone said this one was really about the tempest and him atoning for what he did and um, learn how to forgive someone who hurt you really bad. There's a comment from um, Shauna about the godling's blood. Uh, I was wondering what people thought of that because it kind of flashes in and out. And I was like, I thought it was a pretty intriguing idea. Um, I guess I didn't understand why. Do, do godlings need money? No, I guess it just gets them nice things, but also it seems like they could just take, eh, I guess it depends on who you are as a godling, if you can take what you want, even if you can't pay for it. So does, and, but godling blood heals and stuff, and it's like. I thought it was just like a drug. Like, I didn't know. If okay, I was trying to drug. give them, I was trying to give them something, you know, it's like, is it a fun time and a healing time? Like, what was the reason? <laughs> I, I guess I don't really, I don't know if. Again, if it was something lost in the audio book and I just didn't hear why he was doing that. Um, isn't isn't uh, Madding's nature like he's he's ob obligated to do things for people? He's a like god of obligation. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, that's why he does it. So, but that's not a pusher, like. <laughs> like, oh, he's obligated to give this godly, godly blood because he's at, he's asked for it. No, so what, what I thought it was was that he he likes to collect favors, and godly blood allow him the ability to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because y'all want it, I'm able to curry favor and curry y'all to be able to do these things for me because of it was what I thought it was. Um, so That's just like I got what y'all want and I'm gonna use it to my advantage because it can I can't die if you you can take like you can't take all my blood. It, nothing you can do could kill me, is the thought, right? Because again, they don't think demons are alive. So it's just like ah, I got this never in the supply, and you won't give me your life for a little bit. I mean, come on. That's what I thought it was. But maybe it was just something. Oh, that do. makes sense. I can I could get jiggy with that. I okay. I just, I don't know. <laughs> like, I have a thought in my head for why it is, but I feel like it has to be a book feature. Okay, I'll I'll stand down. I, I just I'm thinking about when um when um Ori and Madding meet, how they were how they met in that alley, and um, Madding was, I guess. You know, doing his thing with another somebody who had wronged him. I don't really remember exactly what happened, but their meeting. Um, and he protected her, um, I guess out of obligation because she sort of happened upon this this confrontation. But and I thought that was a, a interesting meet cute for <laughs> for the two of them. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about. No, I'm never gonna knock anybody's hustle, but I just, you know, favors. I don't know. So, no, Madding was also like the enforcer. So, like, what was it? Yan had the rule that like the godlings could stay, but only in shadow and only if they behaved and weren't hurting humans. So, I thought the godling he had been like fighting with had been like doing rescue stuff. He's like, you're gonna get us all sent back to the gods realm, and no one wants that. So, like, you better get okay. It on, or I'm gonna send you home. Yes, I think I remember that now. And and Ori was. Was she lost or was it icy or something? It was like icy, she so like that yeah. lady was calling her like, you're going to die. And she's like, yeah. can you help <laughs> <Yeah>. me then? <laughs> Not really. That was creepy too. I was just thinking about that. Like she was just like following her all creepily in the background, like two blocks behind her, like she's going to die. You know, <laughs> that was funny. 
Yeah, I don't know. For the Gosblood, I thought they just kind of liked doing human stuff. And so they're like, oh, if we have money, we can do like more human stuff. That's fun. That's just what I thought they were doing it for. But I don't really know. Um, did people's feelings about the Tempest change in this story at all? We learn a little bit more about why he did what he did. And we spend more time with him. And basically, I think he bamboozled people into thinking he couldn't change, if anything. That's what I've been like. Because I was like, bro, like, you could have ended this a long time ago. It only took you 10 years. You could have apologized, set Nido free. He would have been mad, but it's in Nido's nature to change. So if you could change, you're the only person stopping anything. That, that's how. If anything, right. like, he bamboozled y'all. He got to torture y'all for like centuries, and then ten years later, okay, I learned my lesson. He got y'all. That's what I thought. Right, because after he killed Enifa, he then traps all his children. Most of them are in another dimension, and then the most powerful ones are imprisoned in human bodies. So it's like you could have just apologized and done something about killing Enifa in the first place, and then. Because Nahadot is mostly angry about you keeping him imprisoned in that body. So, like, if you didn't do that, he would have forgiven you a long time ago. And you wouldn't be in this position. So it's like, I feel bad because I know how you feel, but just a little bit. I don't feel bad a lot. No, he was way too fast with the healing and the recovery and the all of that. And... So I feel worse for Ori because she ended up losing the most out of this deal, I think, because she can't see at all. And well, she's, I mean, I guess she's just, I don't know if this is, I don't know. She's just a regular blind person at this point. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't have, she doesn't, I don't know if it's because she's moved so far away from the, the tree or because of something being taken away from her after that last battle. So I don't have, my feelings didn't change for any Um I do feel like I understand him a little better, but I don't necessarily care more about him. And I, I really don't know what, maybe we'll talk about this later, but I have no idea what's going to be in book three after, after this. Like, what are we going to talk about? I have no idea. I don't know, that was a little, I don't know, maybe anticlimactic when we get to him explaining, like, why the, he is the way he is. And he's like, my nature is basically, like, I need people. And, like, for, like, two seconds, they forgot about me. And that made me feel real sad. <laughs> and so I just knew she had to go. She just, I can't be like, okay okay with your whiny ass. Oh, they yeah, were they're not paying attention to me. Legit, I was like, so they did what their nature is to do. And your feelings was hurt? Yeah. Mm -mm. There was also the what's her name Shahari. Yeah, Shahar. The first, yeah, that, she's the one who was manipulating part, him too. That part I did feel bad for, but then I was also like, "This is why humans ain't nothing." So that was that too. Like I was like, yip, 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 yip. but it did make sense. That for me makes sense why they killed the demon. Like why all of that was like, nah, we can't do this. Cause one, you'll fall in love and you'll be manipulated and try to kill all of us. Like, I was like, okay, we can do it. I mean, she was no, cold she though. She killed her own kid. her own kid. I was like, damn. Didn't she killed her own kid, right? Yeah, she did. She did it like unsolicited. She's like, here you go. <laughs> oh my god. But I think I wonder if that's also where that started the the air mary ascension right because we remember in book one we learned that you have to kill something you love very dearly in order to get to this place right like he had to kill his wife so i wonder if that's how that started because she killed her child like i gave you the ultimate sacrifice so if anybody takes my place they have to do the same i didn't think mm -hmm. about that just now but that that's the thought i had now. i think that would make sense i don't i was wondering if it made people if like a Tempest's story made people reconsider, I guess, how they felt about him, I guess, because for me, I was like, okay, if it's like a nature thing, it's like, you can't not do the nature. Um, I didn't know if that, I don't know, I think the first time around, I was like more, 
sad for him. But uh, the second time around, I was like, this is so silly. I could go with that if it didn't take him 10 years. If it took him like 100, okay. If but you got also, to see I like some people you care about die and all that, maybe. But I could go with that if we didn't know from his story that he didn't already have to change to even get to that point. He had to change to love Inifa because she wasn't there. Like, so he he can change. He just doesn't like to, and it's not fast. So that was why I was like, nah, I can't feel that because you did change multiple times. Like, you've changed and done things that you didn't normally do. It's like you don't want, I don't know, it just felt like you're using your nature as is what I felt like. Right. Right. At the end when, like, Ori was facing off against like Yaini and Nahado. I was like, girl, please sit down. You don't know anything about this man. They know Nahado knows more about Entepmus than you do. So please just sit down. Just stop. That was interesting. That was interesting. The little showdown with Sia in the uh, in Sky. Um, I just thought his double take was so funny to me. Like when she was like, no, but he's actually like this. And he's like, <laughs> like, are you very brave? Or are you just like, it's like the it's very <laughs> Um, What did you think of like the ending of the book? Um, so at the end, Ori, I assume the way I interpret is that Ori kind of like used up all of her magic making a tempest a god for a second, and that's why she couldn't see magic anymore. Um, but also, like, there's kind of like a big change in like Yena's um, like edict, I guess, for the world. Like, before she'd been like, We want the gods to be completely separate from the world, we're all gonna pull out, and now after like some pr um, prodding from Ori, she's like, Okay. The gods are now allowed to roam, or the godlings at least are allowed to roam, even like outside of shadow. Um, and I guess what what did you think of that development? First, I want to say I called that she was going to get pregnant. <laughs> I even told my husband. I can't remember where it was, but I was like, I feel like all these sidebars is her talking to like a kid. Like I think she's going to have a baby. And then I wrote when she wrote, like you, my little surprise. I was like, I knew it. I was just screaming, but um, thinking of all the godlings being able to like extend their reach just made me think that it's probably going to get exceptionally chaotic. I think because I was picturing like a hundred lils running out to different far corners of the world. And that just sounds absolutely terrifying, um, <laughs> which made me think that maybe that's where we're going to go in the third book is like the the meshing and blending of godlings and humans and how life is just gonna like completely change around um but I thought it was like I thought it was a I thought it was a good ending I don't think I was as excited to jump into the to the next book as I was for the first book the first book with like all of us like we were ready to jump in immediately this one I felt like I needed to sit down and take a week to digest what I just learned and then what is going to progress in the story. And I, also, baby. Right. I mean, I think also at this point, we you know, like there's not really going to be like as much continuity, you know? So like, I think that for me was definitely an adjustment. Like, Oh, like I get to attach this main character and we're not going to see her ever again. Probably like we're following more like, I guess a store, I guess like the arc of this world and like, ideas kind of than like any one person that ending um that ending was it was good i don't know y'all i always want more what is wrong with me okay so we we find out that Ori is talking to a little baby, and I love how Jimison does that. Like how she, I don't know, I don't know if this is going to be the case for um, the Dream Blood duology, but like the way that she kind of makes 
makes it like you're talking um, <laughs> to somebody else that's also a part of the story, if not, you know, sort of up here. Um, but it was kind of neat. I still really loved it. I think I gave it the same rating that I gave the first book um, for different reasons. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what I wanted more of. I think I wanted um, more of understanding of matting. I wanted more of, um, I didn't really, again, I didn't understand um, Date's uh, motivations other than revenge, but I didn't get that until our conversation tonight. Um, I mean, I did understand that he was upset that all the demons, all the demons had been killed, but like, I don't know, I guess it was like, dude, chill, because you're bringing more problems. <laughs> so I didn't really, I didn't really put that together until tonight, but it was, the ending, I, I didn't like it as much as the first one, but it still was satisfying, and I still wanted more. I liked the whole book overall, but it was just very neat, I think, is what my problem is. It was kind of neat compared to the first one and compared to other endings. For me, um, I didn't see the baby part coming. Um, I was like, what? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when, it, when she put that line in, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Did Tempest make her pregnant on purpose? Did he do it on accident? Was actually Yanny giving her a baby because the Tempest is leaving her? Or, you know, how did this baby come to be? Because Yanni's also Anatha who makes life and can create and destroy life. So, but yeah, I'm interested. It was a neat ending. Like it wrapped up pretty well, unlike the first one. So I'm interested where it goes from here. Um, I'm interested in see if Ori shows up into the, the third book or any of the novellas. If we see how she's doing after where Tempest is going, you know, all things. Um, so uh, I said this and I say this all the time. I I love how Jimison tells stories. I love that they're always oration. I love that it's always someone talking to you because that's how we as black people tell stories. So it was everything for me. Um, I think that I, I also appreciate that um, it's a different type of trilogy. It's a trilogy where you're getting three complete stories and not one continuous story. And I'm, I'm okay with that because I feel like I'm getting a more dynamic understanding of the world um and what goes on and how people move in it and so so I like that um again this is my least favorite book of the trilogy um I don't expect that to change with reading book three so there's that um but uh, I definitely will say that I like the book more now on the second read than I did the first one. It was still five stars for all three books uh both times around but I definitely found more that I like in, in it the second read. Just gonna say that the narratives of Jemison's story are so important. Like the first time the perspective and who was talking was very important because that's how we knew that Yena had the other goddess in her. We find out this time around, narration is important for the um, Broken Earth trilogy and it is a factor in at least the first one of the Dreamblood duology. Um, for me, I think what, this time around, I was a little confused by Yena's, like what Yena wants, I guess, because I, on it, because to me, it just seemed like such a reversal from her previous decision that, like, we're going to stay out, we're going to let humans do their thing. Like, I don't know if it's like to her in her mind, if like the, the three are very separate from the godlings, so, like the three are going to stay off in the gods' realms and the godlings can do whatever. Um, if that's what's going to happen. Um, I think I kind of, the first time around, I did like Yena and Nahadith less because of what they were going to do to Ori. Um, that was something that I was like, uh, I wish she hadn't done that. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I have any more thoughts about the ending. 
Um, I thought it was interesting that Shamala, what Shamala brought up about where did the baby come from? Because I did have that thought. Was that was that Yana a gift to Yana, from Yana to Ori, or was that a Tempest, um, this mortal self? You know, because we didn't really talk about birth control. <laughs> um, so, and he is a human, so you know. I thought that was interesting, and I did have that thought, but it didn't. I didn't think we could do that. So, I think you shot me. Yeah, because when they were, when they did what they did, you know, they had sex. He was in his, I guess, true form. Like his power was. I don't know. It was like when Yeni and Nahadoth kind of had that. When Yeni and Nahadoth had sex, he took her to the male storm and back. So it's kind of like that too. So maybe I don't know, he he busted out in her. I don't know. And the magic will do that. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's quite. I just have to ask, like, where did the baby come from? Oh. from the hammer? This baby was so cute. Stack house for long. We're talking about the mechanics and god sex. <laughs> I tackled. <laughs> so I feel like it's it's his kid because he told that story about being with that one human woman and then her killing their kid and that throwing him into like a spiral. So I just kind of like automatically assumed, but then once you brought it up, I was like, "Oh snap! Yeah, was it Yanny?" So I think I think he impregnated her. I think that her being pregnant is the reason that Yanny didn't kill her. I think Ooh. that's the reason she, she found she figured out yeah. a different way because she knew the baby was there. Good point. Good point. Do you that's think what I, I think she's pregnant. Knew that, knowing that she was pregnant, I think she also knew what that meant for a Tempest to have done that. Do you think Nahado she knows she's pregnant? I feel like if he don't, she gonna tell him. <laughs> like I feel like she gonna find a way. So like I feel like I feel like here's what I think happens. I think they do stuff, and then I think that they go back to the guys' room, and Yane is like, okay, so now we need to have a conversation. Listen, listen, listen. listen. I I know, baby. I know. I. Mama knows Put your listening it. ears on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just need you to. Because when she said, like, if this, maybe this had been, like, 100 years from now, I could have talked him out of it. Like, I literally think that that's what she is. Like, she's like, okay, babe, reason. Let's reason. So I feel like he know now. I feel like he didn't know in that kitchen, but he know now. Also, if he had known, I don't know if that would have changed his thoughts on it, you know? I feel like he would have right, been like, like get rid of her. <laughs> but, but he could yeah. lose his son, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes me feel sad about her. <laughs> you know, she should have just left the Tempest in the mukbang and just went on with her day. Like, he just fucked up her life, so. Mm, that's you lost Madden and now you a single mama. I just feel like you should have left him alone. What do people think about Madden and Ori? I was like, it's cute with the bells. He shows up, there's a little bell. That's nice. I, I love like it. That. That was so <laughs> I like their energy. I they were so it. cute. He was like, I was good or something about you. I was like, oh. I felt so sad for him. Yeah, Madding didn't deserve that. He should have. Poor guy. He's just living his life. He wanted. He yeah. he was leaving her alone too, and then because yeah. of the tempest, he had to go back into her life. So. So for people who haven't read the third book, oh wait. So have we already said which book is the favorite so far? This one is still, I think. I think it still might be my favorite of the trilogy so far. The second one, yeah. I think it was really like the ending for me. So I was like, wow, I have to reconsider my feelings about these people I got like really attached to in the first book. And so I think for me, that's why I rated about the first one. And we'll see what I think once we read the third one. But I think this is going to still be my favorite of the trilogy. 
I, mean, I know Shay. I <laughs> saw nah, I saw why y'all was gonna kill it. It didn't make me feel no type of way. Like, girl, Sia tried to tell you to leave him alone. Maddie tried to tell you to leave him alone. So when they came up with another alternative that left her alive, I was like, okay, I'm fine with that. Um, book one is my favorite of what we've read of the entire book three is my favorite. Yeah, book one is my favorite because, you know, not adult is in that and down and all around. But I, re I did enjoy this one, too. The political intrigue, the action and stuff like that is really good. I think. Any other thoughts? In the comments, um, the box. The box. Or the I don't know if it's your favorite so far. I was just gonna say I like them both. I, I rated them both five stars, but I think that if I have to, pick, if I have to pick a favorite between the two so far, probably the first one, just because we—that's when we established the world. And establish the the big three's nature. So it's 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 edging out barely though, just barely. I'm really excited for the third one. Um, I don't think I like don't like the second one, but of what I've read, I definitely like the first one better. And very excited <laughs> for the third. <laughs> So Hot, Chloe, you're alone. Alone. <laughs> this happened with the Broken Earth trilogy, but Chloe, okay, so the difference being this time is like I was bored with book two of the Broken Earth, like the Obelisk Gate, I think. I was bored with it. I, I mean, it was it, it was necessary. I needed it, but I was bored, and I wasn't bored here. But it had everything still has. I mean, again, it still has a purpose, and we needed all of this, but like. It's a big difference. I feel like I it's, I can't compare, but I brought it up, so I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I put it here, but it's it's a big difference so far. We'll see what the third one because I really don't know what to expect. I think I probably should have some expectations. Um, I know y'all said that Sia is a big part of the third book, so there's that. But what about Sia? So let me say. Yeah, I don't know if I really compare this to the Obelisk Gate. Um, like, for me, I feel like theme-wise, the Obelisk Gate is a lot more similar to 100,000 Kingdoms because there's, like, the realization about the mom and, like, sort of reckoning with, like, oh, this time we've been on the outside and we really like the mom and then we kind of get the daughter's perspective on it. Um, and just because it's, like, not a continuous story in this trilogy, I think the purpose is very different. But, yeah, yeah it, it seems I like the middle book in the trilogy. <laughs> that seems to be the theme. Um, do people have like predictions for the last book of the series if you haven't read it? I have no idea. I'm just here for the ride. Because it's not continuous. I don't know what to expect from the third one. This one is actually a little mm, not really. Um like Haddo's back too. Um, so he's kind of like a, a common thread through the trilogy, but um yeah. What I like about book three is that it changes everything you know about the world. I just love that she did that. Like, I just love it. It was just, I love it. I love it. I love it. It made everything like, oh my God, this is so crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, I, um, sorry. Did you have something to say, Deidre? I was just thinking, like, who's going to come back that we haven't seen much of or that we've been wanting? I mean, don't tell me, obviously, but, like, who would I want to see in the third book that we haven't got much follow-up on? Again, I'm going to put my boy Dakota on the, you know, first of all, I want to know how his suffering's going. Somebody tell me how it's going already. Like, damn. And then, um... I I don't know who else I want to know. <laughs> Anything. I hope Lil's still okay. I hope she's thriving. No, I really do. I, I hope Lil is out here living her best life. Just eating shit that people are bringing to her. I hope she's doing okay. 
Yeah, I hope we see Samina on a dog leash, tamed up, doing whatever Nahadol wants to do with her, you know, licking his foot, whatever it is. I need it described to me. Why are you like this, Shoma? <laughs> because she messed with my man, and you don't do that. You have to pay for it. Oh, uh, she says she wasn't big on the third book. So it'll be interesting to see people's reactions to the ending of the third one. Because I think that um, people are kind of divided on it in the general Jemison readership. Um, so that was all I had to say. Does anyone have any announcements to make? I know we're doing sprints on Shay's channel next week at 7 p.m. EST, 8 p.m. Central. Okay, there's not going to be any hangman. 7 p.m. Central. Sorry, 7 p.m. Central. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> nope, I don't have anything coming up personally. Is there anything for the Missy Elliott uh, readathon? Yeah, uh, we got. Two more days. <laughs> Two more days of us reading books served by authors, Black with a Big B. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last night we watched Waiting to Exhale. It was awesome. Thank you to everybody who came. We had a blast. Um, the only thing I got is uh, I put it on my story, but I'm doing an interview tomorrow on somebody's channel. So, you know, y'all find that channel and whatnot. <laughs> It'll be that I'll probably share it in the morning. Um but yeah that's that's all that's all I got. Are there any developments for the Sookie Stackhouse read along? Ciao. Um it's been canceled. <laughs> um the first and second book were were something. Um we're reading Club Club Dead next. It's the third book. Y'all pray our strength. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Um, she, it's just right. It's so many races, just like little things, like under, like, you know, just like right there. It's like right there all the time, the whole time. And it's it's an experience, but we're, we're going to get through it because we made a commitment. <laughs> Are you the matting of the group? You have to stick to your debts. That's apparently, apparently, I'm, I'm, I'm the obligation person. Right. Thank you, everyone, in the comments for coming out. Thank you to all my lovely co-hosts for joining me for the discussion today. Um, take care. Hope to see you at the next sprints. Have a good rest of your night and your weekend. Bye.